Hello YouTube, this is Corbin22 here, back with another 100 point squadron build for Star Wars X-Wing Miniatures. In this series we discuss 100 point squadron builds and discuss their competitive viability in the Star Wars X-Wing Miniatures game. Uh, today what we've got going here is we've got a, um, a three ship squadron consisting of two TIE Advance X-1s and one TIE Punisher all piloted by Juno Eclipse, Zetrix Strom, and Red Line respectively. Uh, the name of the build, I'm going to go with, uh, hmm... I guess we could call this the, my, I don't want to call it the Punishing One, because that's already in the name of another ship, so let's just say we'll call this the uh, uh, Triple Punishment, I guess. Yeah, Triple Punishment works. Basically the idea is um, the TIE Advance are going to be providing covering fire for the TIE Punisher, who's going to be providing a, providing mid, uh, close to mid-range um, uh, fire, uh, lowest range damage. While well, the tie advance swoop around and um, distract the um, distract the enemy ships from and make sure that they don't uh, they they deal as li as as little damage to red line as possible. Um, so yeah, let's go. With, let's look at the build we have here. Um, we got a fairly uh, fairly decent looking build here. We got uh, both the tie advance have two three upgrades, whereas uh, the tie punisher has um, uh, five. Uh, the TIE Advances have been equipped with cards that come with the Raider, the Imperial Raider package, or the Imperial Raider Expansion Pack, which means that these TIE Advances would be much more deadly and a lot more competitive, competitively viable. Uh, we'll start with the heavy bombarder of the build, and that is Redline. Coming in at the pilot school of 7, he flies the Sinar Fleet Systems TIE Punisher for the Galactic Empire. He comes with the standard stats of a TIE Punisher, attack value 2, agility value 1, a hole value 6, and a shield value of 3. His action bar consists of the focus, target lock, and boost actions. He costs 27 squadron points to field. And his upgrade, gar upgrade bar consists of assistance upgrade, two warheads, two missiles, and two bombs. His ability states, you may maintain two target locks on the same ship. When you acquire a target lock, you may acquire a second lock on that same ship. So basically... Redline's ability behaves a bit like the Recon Specialist whenever, because with the Recon Specialist, if you take a focus action, you can uh, sign a second lock on or a second focus action or a second focus token. With Redline's ability, you can take a target lock and then you can take a second target lock on that same ship in the same turn. So basically, essentially, you get two target locks and you can maintain those two target locks on the same ship, which is pretty essential to the build we have going for him. I've displayed this build before, and I find it's actually quite effective if you use it properly. Uh, as well as if you have a sizable export. Uh, we'll go with the, uh, well, for his modification, we've gone with a 29 engine Mark II. This is becoming mandatory for a lot of the heavy TIE, tie, um, tie uh, ships of the TIE series, like the TIE Advance, TIE Punisher, the TIE Defender, and the TIE Bomber. Because a lot of their, um, they're severely lacking in the green maneuvers, and this increases the amount of green maneuvers they get. It basically states, at a cost of one, you may treat all bank maneuvers as green maneuvers. So that means the uh, tie, TIE Punisher now has nine green maneuvers to work with, so that's very good in case you have to do a hard one or a K turn four. Because um, then you'll have uh, lots of ways to get rid of that stress and still stay on your opponent's tail and stay within range to use your to use your weapons, uh, primary and secondary respectively. Uh, for his systems upgrade, I've gone with a fire control system. Coming in at a squad point cost of two, get this to focus. It states, after you perform an attack, you may acquire a sec you may acquire a target lock on the defender. So basically, immediately after you perform your attack, you get a free target lock action. Pretty straightforward. Uh, this is essential for the build to work. I'll show, you in, I'll show you in a little bit. For his warhead, I've gone with extra munitions, which comes at a cost of two. And it states, when you equip this card, place one ordnance token on each equipped warhead, missile, and bomb upgrade card. When you are instructed to discard an upgrade card, you may discard one ordnance token on that card instead. So... Uh, at pretty much uh, at pretty much half to a third of the cost of a secondary of a second secondary, you can have two um, uh, of the secondary absolutely free at the cost of a warhead slot, which is pretty nifty if you think about it. And here's where we come to the the where the magic begins of this build. Both of his missiles cons both of his missile slots consist of cluster missiles. They come at attack value of three, a cost of four, and can be used at range one to two. And it states, spend your target lock and discard this card to perform this attack twice. So let me explain the magic behind this particular setup we have here for Redline. 
Redline's ability allows you to take two target locks, or maintain two target locks on the same ship, and when you require target lock, you have the option of make, of um, uh, putting on a second target lock on that ship. Uh, you get your two target locks on the target you want to fire at. You get it within range two to one. Fire with one of your four cluster missiles. You should have four now because of cluster munitions. So you have you fire with your first cluster missile. You spend your first target lock. Roll your dice. Change any unfavorable result you have with your second target lock, and then right before you conduct your second attack with your state with that same missile, you use fire control system. Gain a target lock on that guy. Roll your dice. Spend your target lock. Reroll the unfavorable results you get, and then of course again fire control system lets you take a target lock. Lets you take a target lock, and then Redline's ability allows you to take a second target lock on that same enemy, provided he's not destroyed. So with this build, it's based on action economy. Fire control system pretty much gains you free target locks or, uh, or, or all across the board, which allows you to focus more on your, uh, your which allows you to um, um, rely, um, concentrate more on your focus and your boost actions, which means um, you might need to do target lock the first time around, but then after that, fire control system pretty much does the work for you, and then you can use a focus to modify any more dice, or you can use your boost action and get up closer to the guy if you need to. Uh, now let's move on to his escorts. You've delved on long enough with the TIE Punisher, just move on to the two TIE Advance providing his escort. The first one we have here is Captain Juno Eclipse. Coming in at a pilot skill of 8, she flies the Sunar Fleet System's TIE Advanced X1 for the Galactic Empire. She comes with the standard stats of a TIE Advanced, attack value of 2, agility value of 3, hull value of 3, and a shield value of 2. Her action bar consists of a focus, target lock, barrel roll, and evade actions. She costs 28 points to field, and her upgrade bar consists of an elite pilot talent upgrade and a missile upgrade, and an unlisted uh, title and modification. Uh, her ability reads, reads, when you reveal your maneuver, you may increase or decrease its speed by 1 to a minimum of 1. So Juno Eclipse is very good. Um, she's Basically the idea behind Juno is, if you reveal a maneuver and you're going to overshoot that, um, when you're going to overshoot your target, you can change, you can increase or decrease the speed of your maneuver accordingly in order to make sure that you stay on target, so to speak. So that means, say Juno has a straight 5, but she's going to overshoot her target. You can decrease that to a speed four, and hopefully, as luck will have it, you'll you'll um you'll stay within you'll stay within range of your target. Uh, for her uh, title card, we've gone with a tie X one title card. Coming in at a cost of zero, it's a tie advanced only title card. It states your upgrade bar gains the systems upgrade icon. If you equip a systems upgrade, its squad point cost is reduced by four to a minimum of zero. So this has been a long-awaited must for the TIE Advance. This is what makes them more competitively viable, because not only do they gain a system upgrade, but it's basically a free system upgrade, provided that it costs four or lower. So that means if you put on a fire control system, if you put on a accuracy corrector, advanced sensor, sensor jammer, any of those four, um, they, come, they, they come for free. If you put on something like, say, an advanced targeting computer, that cost it goes from a cost of five to a cost of one. So... Yeah, this is a this is a must. This is this is basically a godsend from final from Fantasy Flight Games to help make the Tide Advance more competitively viable. Uh, let's go into her other upgrades for her elite, her elite pilot skill. I think this one benefits her pretty well. It is stay on target. Uh, stay on target states at a cost of a squad point cost of two. When you reveal the maneuver, you may rotate your dial to another maneuver with the same speed. Treat your maneuver as a red maneuver. So at the cost of making your maneuver a red maneuver, here's what you can do. With Juno Eclipse, you can increase or decrease the speed of your maneuver accordingly, and then you can use Stay on Target to, de to change the bearing of your maneuver as long as it's at the same speed. So that means, uh, say your target does like a hard 2 and you do a hard 3, or a, a, hard, a soft 3, you can change the speed of that to a soft 2 and then change the bearing of that to a hard 2. You'll stay on target of your opponent, but you will get stressed because of it because you'll be treated as a red maneuver. To rectify, that, to rectify that problem, for her sensors uh, upgrade, her systems upgrade, I've gone with an advanced sensors. Coming in at a squat point cost of 3, it states, Immediately before you reveal your maneuver, you may perform one free action. If you use this ability, you must skip your perform action step during this round. So this was made for ships that have a lot of, green manu a lot of red maneuvers on their dial, or are equipped with upgrades that turn their maneuvers from green or white to red. It allows you to take your action beforehand, before you reveal your maneuver, so you can do like say a barrel roll, or a focus, or a target lock, or an evade, or Juno Eclipse, 
and then to, and then you make your maneuver, increase it, adjust the speed accordingly, change its bearing, will stay on target, get your red maneuver, you'll get stressed, but you'll still take your action. So um, yeah, that's the idea of Manjuno. She's basically able to adjust her speed accordingly, change her bearing if she has to, and then if she if if she has to change her bearing, she can to use advances to take her maneuver before she reveals her maneuver dial. Let's move on to her other uh, the other uh, fire support for the tie advanced or the um, time punisher. That is Zetrix Strom. Coming in at a squad pilot skill of 6, he fl also flies the Sinar Fleet System's TIE Advanced X1 for the Galactic Empire. He also comes with um, some, the same squad, uh, the same stats as uh, Juno Eclipse, Attack 2, Agility 3, Hull 3, Shield 2. He can also, his action part also consists of the Focus, Target Lock, Barrel Roll, and Evade actions, cost 26 points to field, and he's also able to take an Elite Pilot Talent Upgrade and a Missile Upgrade. His ability states... Enemy ships at range 1 cannot add their range combat bonuses when attacking. So, with Zetrix Draw, you want to get in as close as you possibly can. And with a tie, and because it's a, because it is a tie, that won't be a problem because they have they can go as high as speed 5. So that means you with Zetrix Draw, you want to rocket in there as fast as you can, get as close as you can to your out, get as close as you can to your um to your opponent so that way if they decide to focus their uh, attention onto Zetric they can't apply they can't apply their menu, uh, their um their attack value bonus at range 1 but you can so that means Zetric Strom has a greater chance of surviving uh, a range 1 attack because of his ability again like with Juno we've also given him a tie x1 title card which states he gets a system upgrade and it's free unless it costs as long as it costs four four points or lower uh, for his elite pilot skill, elite pilot talent, I've got something different. I've chosen to go with Juke. Coming in at a squad point cost of 2, it states, When attacking, if you have an evade token, you may change one of the defender's evade results to a focus result. So that means, if the if defender does not have any modifying dice, does not have any modifiers on them, uh, this, helps guarantee, this helps to... Um, to bad help to this helps give you a better chance of um, landing a hit onto your opponent, because say they have a high agility value and they forget to take say they take like a boost or something or any form of um or any anything like a tire lock or they take anything that anything that's not a focus or evade you can juke them out at range one to change one of their evade results to a focus result, which would be very handy. It's it's, it's kind of like um sensor jammer almost only the opposite happens instead of when you're defending it's when you're attacking. Uh, for his system, I've chosen to give him an advanced target computer. It is a system only for the TIE Advance. It comes at a squad point cost of 5, but thanks to the TIE X1 title card, it is reduced to a squad point cost of 1. It states, when attacking with your primary weapon, if you have a target lock on the defender, you may add one critical result to your roll. If you do, you cannot spend target locks during this attack. So, the downside of the advanced target computer is, if you use it, you can't spend your target lock. The upside is... If you have a target lock on the defender, say say Zetric Strom has say he's attacking at rage when he gets three dice, and they're say say they're all hits, you can use your advanced target computer to add a fourth critical hit result. So that basically ensures that, or again, like with Juke, which flips one of your uh, opponent's focus of uh, uh, evade results to a focus result, advanced target computer adds a critical result, which can be handy. If you um, if you roll an unfavorable result, like say you get like out of those three dice, you get one hit. You can change one of those blanks to a critical because that's adding a critical result to your a critical uh, result to your roll. Um, but yeah, so he, his idea is he's gonna he, the idea behind Zatrik is he's rushing in, juking them out with an evade token, taking a target lock, and then using his advanced target computer to score as many critical uh, to score uh, at least one critical hit um, on his opponents. So that's the idea behind the build. Redline is the heavy assault fighter. Juno Eclipse is the gal who strategizes and uh, changes her maneuver, changes the speed and bearing her maneuver accordingly to in order to pursue her targets. Cedric Strom is the rusher. He rushes in, he jukes them out, and then he uses advanced target computer to ensure that he lands at least one critical hit. So that's how the build is it's constructed. I will return in just a second to show you how the build works. Okay, we're back. For this for this example, we have the um, Zetric Strom, uh, Juno Eclipse, and Redline going up against Chewbacca and the Millennium Falcon and Poe Dameron in a T-70 X-Wing fighter. Uh, for this example, um, Chewie's already taken a maneuver, 
And let's say for this example, he has taken an evade token because he has the uh, Millennium Falcon title card. And um, yeah, so that means Zetric is going to make his maneuver next. His maneuver is going to be a soft three. So I'm going to take his maneuver here, maneuver uh, template here, move it along here. So as you can see, he's now at point blank range of the Falcon. And he's going to take a target lock action. Now let's say for this example, he already has a he already had a target lock on him prior to that, but he's going to take an evade action this time. So he's got his target lock, he's got an evade. And then next we have uh, red line. So in this scenario, he's already been stressed. He does a soft two bank. However, because of the twin engine mark two, that becomes a green maneuver, and now his stress is gone. So now he is going to take his maneuver like so and then he's going to take a target lock action onto the falcon and then he's going to use his ability to acquire a second target lock onto the same ship so now he has two target locks on the falcon and then say for this scenario um the river the um, resistance gets initiative poe damron is going to make say hmm, he's going to make a straight three He's going to make a straight three. Uh, he's going to take a straight three maneuver, which is a green maneuver. He's going to use, say, for this example, he has BB-8 and push the limit. Before he takes a maneuver, he's going to do a barrel roll. Uh, he's going to do a barrel roll this way, I should say. That's. He's then going to push the limits and boost forward. He will then make his maneuver. Like so. And then for his third action, he's going to take a focus because of his ability. Like that. Now, here's where the magic of Juno Eclipse comes into play. She revealed a soft three because she was originally going to go after the Falcon, but now that she's seen that Poe is flown ahead of her, what she's going to do is she's going to change the speed of her maneuver to a speed two, so I'll just show you on the dial here. Hang on a second. Should I change? No, if I can just bear with me, guys. Come on, there we go. So she's now doing a speed two maneuver, and then, or rather, no, yeah, and then of course before she did that, she did her uh, push the limit, which she did her advanced sensors which would probably be like, say, a barrel roll. Do a barrel roll action real quick. Like that. And then she's going to use stay, and then she's going to use stay on target to change the bearing of that to a hard two. So as you can see, she's now stressed. But thanks to her, thanks to her advanced sensor, she's able to take her barrel roll action to get into a better position for her arc. She changed the speed of her straight three to a, uh, her soft three to a soft two, and then she changed the bearing of it with stay on target to a hard two, which caught which gave her a stress. But now she's in a now as you can tell here, she's in a pretty good spot to fire on Poe. She's at range two, so yeah, she's in a pretty good spot to fire at Poe right now. So. And then, of course, we move on to the attack phase. Um, let's see here. Um, Juno Eclipse, she'll get attack. She'll get two attack. Um, Poe Dameron will get two defense. So she got one hit in the blank. He got an evade, and then, of course, his ability allows him to change that to an evade, so Poe is safe for the time being. And then we we'll move on to Redline here. Now, what Redline, what Redline is going to do, normally Poe would have a shot, but he has no one in range. What Redline is going to do is he's going to spend one of his target locks to attack with one of his um, to attack with one of his um, proto, uh, his uh, cluster missiles. So, get the dice again. It'll be a one versus three, like so. So he's got two hits on that. The Falcon will spend his evade token 
like so. So that cancels out the first hit. But then, um, or no, yeah, then say before that, he uh, spends his second target lock. It's another focus result, so yeah. So he's, he evades the first shot. However, fire control system lets him retake a target lock. And now the Falcon is bare. He only has the one defense dice. And as you can see now, he has two hits and a blank. He'll spend his target lock, or two hits and a focus. He'll spend his target lock to change this result into a blank. So again, another two hits, but this guarantees that the Falcon takes one shield. So he's taking a shield now, and then fire control system again, a target lock, and then red line's ability lets him retake a second target lock onto the Falcon. Again, allowing you to adjust, say, for a focus or a um, or for a boost action in order to get into a good firing position to attack the Falcon. Now it's Zetric's strong turn. He's attacking at range one, so he's gonna get three dice. Falcon's only gonna get one. Roll the dice here. Now I've got two hits. I have one hit and two focuses. I could spend my target lock to chain to re-roll these. However, the advanced targeting system adds one advanced targeting computer adds one critical result, one critical uh, result to my roll. So that means I can take this focus and turn it into a critical. This guarantees that the Falcon is going to take a shot. Now say this was an evade action. I can then use Juke, because I have an evade token, to change this into a focus, and because he has no evades and he has no way no evades to add to his result, or focus token to change that result, he now suffers both the hit and the critical, reducing his shields even further. Now it's time for the Falcon. He's going to attack back, and he's going to attack at, Zet uh, at Zedric Strong again. He would get an attack, because he has a turret, he can fire in all directions. However, normally he would get an attack value bonus because he's at range one of Zetric. However, Zetric's ability states that enemies attacking him at range one do not get their attack value bonuses. So that means the Falcon would normally get four. Zetric's ability keeps him at three. And of course, Zetric Strom has three agility. So this, this means that Zetric Strom here has a chance to evade a shot. So let's see, he's got one hit, one focus, one blank. Zetric has one evades, but say this was a, say this was a focus, Zetric could then spend his evade token that he used on Juke to cancel that hit. Zetric is safe, all the ships are undamaged, Poe got away on Scape, the Falcon took some a bit of damage from the cluster missiles, and now he has three more cluster missiles to go with, plus the spamming of his, um, his um, target locks with fire control system, and as long as he keeps that target lock on the Falcon, Zetric can keep adding critical results to his rolls, even if he has three hits. Because if he's got three hits and you take it, um, you have advanced target computer, then it states you it states that you add a critical result. You don't change, you add it. So that means you get a fourth critical hit like that. So that there guarantees that the Falcon is going to tear suffer some major damage. And of course, with Juke, you can change one of his focus results. Or have a result to a focus result, provided he doesn't have a focus token to help, you know, to uh, change his result, to change that result back to an evade. So this is how the um, this is how the um, X one assault. I'm gonna call yeah, actually, did I call this? Yeah, I'll call this X um, yeah, punishing assault. So yeah, this is how I would use my punishing assault build. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Any sort of criticism is greatly appreciated. If you want, you can use this squadron for any competitive or casual play, or you can tweak it or revamp it to your own specifications. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Corbin22 signing off.